Creating a new product for Amazon is hard, but it's made even harder when you have thousands of small pieces that all have to interconnect with each other. But that is exactly what Snaphouse wanted when they reached out to us to produce their kits for their Amazon store. So Snaphouse originally reached out to us a couple of years ago, and their project was an architectural building kit that would have tons of small white pieces that you could interlink in order to create architectural models, basically an architectural Lego set. Each kit had 28 individual parts, and each one of those 28 parts had about 12 to 15 of its own copies. So each kit actually contained 452 individual pieces. Again, that all had to interlink with each other and be reliable so that people could actually put these kits together. When they reached out to us, the initial designs had already been done. So we worked with them in order to modify the designs so that they would be viable for mass production 3D printing. The reason they wanted to go with printing is because with 28 individual pieces, the cost of molding would be exceptionally expensive and they wouldn't be able to verify that the parts were actually reliable and consistent the way they needed them to be. Whereas 3D printing allowed the chance for iteration of the design and then long-term allowed for mass production. So we went through the design process and iterated through all 28 parts and redesigned them so that they would be able to interlink reliably while still dealing with kind of the expansion issues that can come with 3D printing to make sure that each part was still reliable. And then we went through and created a certification process so that as parts came off the machines, they could be verified that they worked well with inside of the kits. But then Snaphouse took it even further. They wanted to utilize our general assembly capabilities so that they could actually have the kits assembled inside of our factory and then delivered either to Amazon or to individual customers. So we became essentially a drop shipper for their product. This allowed them to reduce cost again because instead of shipping parts from a supplier to another supplier to a boxer to a packager, so on and so forth, they were able to keep it all under one roof and radically reduce cost of transport of items in between individual suppliers. The kit had a number of challenging pieces on it. Some of the pieces had to be printed in a certain orientation in order to maintain a good quality surface finish that could be distributed among the parts. So that all the parts looked the same, they all had to be printed vertically so that there was the same sort of linear texture on the outer side of them. And when printing vertically, you now have a potential embrittlement issue. So we went through and discussed print settings and overall fit so that some parts would fit into other parts more loosely so they would not create the same amount of stresses on them while still feeling like the same kind of interaction as the rest of the parts. This design process took quite a while and we had to really define what is the correct amount of force to have to apply to a part in order to push it into another part. But this was very helpful because the client understood what they needed as far as that fit, so it could be defined. That is so important. The clients, when they are designing new products, have to have a very clear idea of what it is that they need and want, so that it's very easy to work within those constraints. Because if we have constraints, we know where we can go. If we're stabbing in the dark, then it can be a very slow iteration process in verifying a new design. Once those initial sample sets were approved after several iterations, which again could not have been done with traditional manufacturing, then it was approved for mass production and the first few hundred kits were produced. Those few hundred kits obviously had thousands of parts that all had to be consistent and reliable. We produced them all and now continue to store them in inventory in our factories. So now when Snaphouse has orders come through from either their website or through Amazon Fulfillment, we are able to pack up and ship those orders for them through our fulfillment service. So ultimately, it just ended up being a really good fit. So if you're interested in architectural models, I highly recommend that you go over there and take a look at them. But Snaphouse was able to leverage 3D printing because they were able to eliminate tens of thousands of dollars of molding costs. They were able to iterate on the design. They were able to contain the overall manufacturing and production process under one roof rather than having to distribute it around. And long term, they'll be able to modify parts and designs and add new parts into the kits without again having to incur the whole cycle process. They can basically just upload a file now because all of the settings and parameters and standards have been set for their parts. So as they want to expand and continue to grow, it's very easy. And of course, since those parts are now stored digitally inside of our farm, when they want to scale up again, they basically just have to push a button and machines will start cranking them out again. So it's a really good option for manufacturing an item like an Amazon product that might have some uncertainty at the start, but then have the capability to scale up down the line. Real products can be mass produced with 3D printing. You just have to understand what the process is and then use its strengths and make sure that you're designing around things that might be less desirable. 
but you can create really good, high quality final products and be very successful doing it. Have a great day, everybody.